Miss Harding, please. Yes, Mr. Stanton. Oh, uh, cable to Van Dyke, New York office. In reference to our getting leased wire direct to cable station at Penzance, beg to report the only one available belongs to Sir Titus Scott of the Penzance Chronicle, and he will not part with it for all the gold at Fort Knox, Kentucky. Had taken the matter up with the Prime Minister, and he assures me nothing can be done. Prior to that, I took it up with all the cabinet. Uh, prior to that, I took it up with all the cabinet ministers, each of whom I know personally, with no results. Had luncheon last week with Mr. Duffield of the Ministry of Information, and he said, least wire out of the question. I flatter myself that I have a greater acquaintanceship in official circles than any other American in London. And if I can't get a direct least wire to Penzance, it means nobody can. That'll be all, Miss Harding. Mm. Shall I have this boiled down to cable east? Certainly not. Do not change a word, not a single word. Johnny Leeds buried in the middle of that story. Play it up, will you? Johnny, tell Jeff to get Dover and check on the report of the shelling convoy off the coast, will you? Brad. Yes. What about Sir Titus? Sir Titus is not with the Savoy, Mr. Mitchell. Well, fine to be somewhere in this town. Very good, sir. I'll try the Dorchester. Thank you, Albert. Want some more tea, Jeff? Thanks. Thank you, my boy. That was an oil gun, wasn't it, Jeff? No, no. That's a both of us. Swedish gun. That's an oil gun, Albert. Thanks. Thanks. Mind those channel door fights, there's no more room in my wastebasket. What I want to stop about those barges Hitler's putting on the assembly line at Calais. Yeah, but how will they get over? Swim over. Gertrude Entity did it. It's only 20 miles. Hello, Red. Ministry of Information. I know that. What do you got? Casualty. Let's have it. Thanks a lot. Oh. Would you like some more tea, Miss Harding? Mr. Stavison wants us to go out of the nice wire. Thanks. Sir Titus. I'm trying to locate. Try the count. 
I'm trying to take the tiger scoff. I see. Both of them. Here you are. And there you are. <laughs> Twenty-four hours a day, seven days a week, I sit on me blooming seat, waiting for a couple of stinking pigeons, what never comes and never will come. Mr. Bindle, listen. If Mr. Mitchell says the pigeons will come, the pigeons will come. Sure as anything. Suppose they do come. Then what? I don't know. Nobody knows. Not even Mr. Stuyvesant. But Mr. Mitchell told me once that you had the most important post on the staff. Ah. That me. You. I have a rummier assignment than you have. You watch. But me, I listen. Listen? On the radio. What do you listen to? That's the queer part of it, Mr. Bindle. I only have to tune in once a day, five o'clock, for the news roundup. And I only have to get one broadcast. Haggerty, KBC Berlin. And I only have to get one line. One line? That's all. The first line. If she says this is Haggerty speaking from Berlin, it doesn't matter. If she says this is Haggerty calling, broadcasting or coming in from Berlin, that doesn't matter either. But if she says this is Haggerty reporting from Berlin... Yes? Then it does matter. Then I have to find Mr. Mitchell wherever he is, dead or alive, drunk or sober, and let him know. Them's my orders. Word for word, if the pigeons come, and I've been watching here for weeks. I've been listening for weeks. If you ask me, I think this Mitchell's a bit on the balmy side. Oh, no, Mr. Bindle. He knows what he's about. One fine day I'll tune in and I'll hear, this is Haggerty reporting. And one fine day you'll... Mr. Bindle, look. I... Five to five. Five to five? That's time for Haggerty. Pleasant afternoon, Mr. Bindle. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Consolidated Press. Hold the line, please. Mr. Mitchell, New York calling. Put him on, put him on. Hello, hello. Hello, Van, how are you? How did the Giants make out today? They won. What about those barges? We got a tip from Sophia through Belgrade. Hitler's preparing to leave Birch's Garden. They say he's either going to Turkey for an attack on Stubes, to Spain for a raid on Gibraltar, or to France for the invasion. Hello. Hello, Red. Yes, sir. Hello, Red. Red, next time Van Dyke calls, tell him not to mention the word invasion. It's verboten. What about Sir Titus? I've tried to... Try his office again. returned yet? Thank you. You try the Colonial Club, Daisy? No, Albert. I... That's an idea. Never mind the censors. I'll take care of that. Yeah. Hello, Mrs. Wilkins. Did you want me? Yeah, now look, Wilkins, I had a belly full of that balloon bus and stuff. What I want is barges. Barges. Well, how am I going to get over there? Stow away in a Blenheim. Get yourself a fishing smack. Get on the submarine. I'll tell you how you get them to get there. Yeah. Mr. Mitchell. I've located Sir Titus Where? at the Colonial Club. Well! Take over, Johnny, will you? Each day at this time, KBC calls in its correspondents from all parts of the world for the latest news of the war. We will hear first from our correspondent in Berlin, Germany. New York calling Berlin. Come in, Berlin. Good afternoon. This is Haggerty reporting from Berlin. Following a conference today between Russian Ambassador de Kanalov and oh. Foreign Minister von Ribbentrop... Albert, where are you going? To the Colonial Club! The 
Titus, you're a newspaper man. You know what I'm driving at. Young man, my family's published the Chronicle in Penzance since 1842. Yeah, I know that, sir. I know it. We've had a leased wire ever since Samuel F. B. Morse perfected the telegraph. I know that, too, sir. I'll never sell that wire as long as I live. Sir Titus, you don't understand. The northern cable's cut, the eastern cable's cut, the Baltic's cut. All the stuff that used to go overland into Europe down through the Mediterranean must now go via the United States overloading the cable. The wire from London to Penzance is swamped with tons of official, commercial, and press dispatches. It's a bottleneck that's keeping 90 million readers of a thousand newspapers from getting news. But if we had a direct wire to Penzance... Good night. Sir Titus. Good night. Albert, what are you doing here? Tell me to find you. Dead or alive, drunk or sober. Haggerty? Haggerty. Reporting? Reporting. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Any orders? Yeah, tell Bindle will be on the extra alert. Right oh. Now look, Sir Titus. I'm not asking you to sell us the wire. I'm just asking you to lease it to us for one year. No, no. Dash it all. Don't you understand the meaning of the word no? Not when I'm prepared to offer you a thousand pounds cash, Sir Titus. You're wasting your breath. The government's likely to take over your line anyway for signal call, but if you transfer it to us first... Good night to you. All right, then. Let's say six months. One thousand pounds for the use of your lease wire for six months. Good night. Sir Titus, think of this in terms of patriotism. Bosh and I wash. The Chronicle has a circulation of just a few thousand copies. The CP serves 1,000 newspapers with 90 million readers for six months. I'm not going to disorganize my newspaper for six months. Not for three months. No, no, no. Two months. No, no. One month. No. Are you offering me a thousand pounds for one month? Is it a deal? No. All right, then. Two weeks. One week. Are you crazy? Not as crazy as you are, sir, if you turn down that offer. Do I understand you're offering me a thousand pounds for the use of my leased wire for one week? Precisely. One week. Cash in advance. That's my last offer. Very well, sir, Titus. Good night. Come back here. Stromano. See, this man gets an alcohol rub. I don't want him to die of pneumonia. Yes, Sir Titus. Don't you know that's not allowed? I'm terribly sorry. I, uh, I beg your pardon. Ooh. I'm sorry about that match. I assure you, I meant no aid to the enemy. Why'd you like it then? Well, I wasn't thinking. Or rather, I was thinking of something else. I was figuring out how to celebrate. Celebrate? What's there to celebrate? I found a way to save 40 minutes a day. Fancy that. You're an American, aren't you? How'd you know? Americans waste all their time trying to save time, and when they do save it, they don't know what to do with it. Oh, a whole lot can happen in 40 minutes. Not really. For instance, I can get you a taxi. No, thanks. I like to walk. So do I. May I see you home? I have no home. You have no home. We were bombed out this afternoon. Oh, what a shame. If I can be of any service to you, I'm I... staying with my grandmother. Well, I'd like to meet her. My grandmother? Yes. Why? Oh, I love grandmothers. I have two of my own back in the States. They run a little tea room. Uh, tell me, will you, will you have a spot of tea with me? Are you in the habit of picking up girls in the black house? Well, how can you say such a thing? How can you even think such a thing? Are you trying to tell me you're not trying to pick me up? Well, no, of course not. Wait, uh... You don't understand. You walk out into blackness, utter blackness. A match flares up, a hand comes in, and you hear a voice. Good night. No, uh, wait. Don't you see what I mean? Quite. There are millions of people in London, men and women. And out of all those millions, two people meet like, like ships that pass in the night. Don't you see it? it it's the mystery of it. Aren't you taking an awful chance when you can't even see me? Oh, I've seen you all my life. With a turned up nose, rather small but determined chin. Kind of a large mouth. Blonde hair, I hope. Of course, that's not crucial. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure about the color of your eyes. Oh, uh, may I carry your bag? No. Yo. Oh, I'm so sorry. What's wrong? Have you a cold? No, uh, that perfume you're wearing, uh, what is it? 
Christmas Eve. Oh, it's lovely. From now on, that's my favorite perfume. Catch you. Say, uh, uh, you don't suppose my match caused that, do you? Come on, Yank. We better make for the nearest queue. You won't get the all clear for hours. Probably have to spend the night here. Say, Red. Why do you keep on calling me Red? Had an Irish setter once named Red, most beautiful dog in the world. Died of distemper. What's that got to do with me? I love that dog very dearly. Now, whenever I meet anyone to take a shine to, I always call him Red. Well, don't call me Red. Well, what shall I call you? My name's Carlson. That's your first name? No. What is your first name? Jennifer. Jennifer. Are you kidding? No, Jennifer. Jennifer. Red. I like red better. All right, then. Red. Thanks very much. Yeah. Red, she's crazy about me. Look, baby, there's room here for all of us, don't you think? That's it. Say, Red, I want to talk to you. If you don't mind, I want to go to bed. Savoy, do you? Have by any chance manicures at the Dorchester? No. Well, could it be you're the barmaid over in Soho? No. And I won't? You're cold and I'm tired. Don't gone where have I seen you before? Yes. 
a chambermaid at the Regency. Do I look like a chambermaid? Really? Really? What's wrong with the chambermaid? When I left school, I got myself engaged to one. Did you marry her? No. Why didn't you? I met a waitress, the most unusual girl. Her name was Hyacinth. She was... I'm not interested in your love life. Go to sleep. How do I find out where I've seen you before? What difference does it make? If I find out where I've seen you before, then I'll never see you again. Is that necessary? It's an idea. Can't very well call on you at home. You've been bombed out. If I knew where you worked. All right, I work at the Ministry of Information. Bless you. That's that's where I've seen you before. Uh, what, what do you do there? I operate a teletype machine. I get four quid a week. My mother and father live in Winchelsea. I have no brothers or sisters. I'm married. I have four children. One's in Albino. I've sent him to the United States, and I'm terribly sleepy. Oh. What a war. Sneezed, huh? It's like this when we got here this morning. Everybody all right? Except Mr. Bingo. What happened? He was the only one on duty when the bomb fell. And? They tell us at the hospital he'll be out in a week or so. Oh, that's fine. What about those teletype machines? Smashed to smithereens. Daisy, what about the phones? They're all out, Mr. Mitchell. All out of business. Not so long. Mr. Mitchell. Yeah? Could you find somebody to take my place at once? Why? I'm signing for ambulance duty. Stick around, Red. Sorry, Red. Okay, and good luck to you. Thank you. Johnny, get a truck. Make a truck you can find. Chief, want that lease wire to Penzance. Oh, what sort of a man are you, Mitchell? Here we are, bombed out, crippled, our teletype smashed, a man injured, and all you can think We're about is... business, aren't we? And with a lease wire, we can There's beat up... There's no use talking about that now. I wired New York yesterday. It couldn't be done. Well, it is done. I made a deal last night. You what? I made a deal with Sir Titus Scott. Oh, come now, that, that's out of the question. Why, Sir Titus told me he wouldn't sell at any price. He gave me his word. Chief, Captain, he didn't sell it. He only rented it. Rented it for how long? A week for a thousand pounds cash. This is no time for joking, Mitchell. A thousand pounds cash is no joke anyway. You have no right to make just any sort of a deal without consulting me. Well, I'm consulting you right now. 
The tongue of a whole cockeyed world is hanging out for just one story, the invasion of England. And when that story breaks, the guy with the least wire's got a 40-minute edge. Do you realize what that means? It means that our papers will be on the streets almost an hour ahead of anyone else's with the greatest beat in the world. I know, but you're found man a week. One week when everybody knows it'll be months before the Germans ever make an attempt to invade. That's what you say. That's what Berlin says. That's what they want us to think. That's the best strategy in the world. Tally who the big show for spring and then pull it in the fall. Yesterday, Hitler left Berchtesgaden, destination unknown. This morning, I walked all over London. It's almost another Rotterdam. I'm gambling a thousand pounds of CP money that last night was the overture. Oh, rubbish. One week. And what good is the least wire when we haven't even got an office? We'll have an office before the day is over. Oh, and, uh, by the way, Chief, you better get over to the bank and put some money in my account. Money? Me? Yes. I gave Sir Titus a check for a thousand pounds and it's gonna bounce. You what? That's what I said. It's no good. I happen to have 30 odd quid in the bank, so you better get over there with the money. Sir Titus is scotch. Very scotch, so I'd advise you to be there when the bank opens. Thanks a lot. That's fine. As soon as it gets here, load everything you can onto it. We're moving. Where to? Don't worry, I'll let you know. Daisy, I'll be in Duffield's office, the Ministry of Information. Yeah. Did I hear you say we were going to move? That's right. Well, we can't get a one-way to Pigeon Coops, can we? Why, is there anything left of them? Oh, yes, sir. They're quite safe. So is the shack. I've just come from there. Oh, well, that's good. Johnny! Johnny! Yes, sir. Gotta do something about those pigeons. Gotta have somebody up there to watch. Mr. Mitchell, let me watch. No, no, Albert. But I'll do as well as anybody. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you would, Albert, but you're uh, you're too valuable a man. We've got all the work for you to do. But not as important as this. Please, Mr. Mitchell, just until Mr. Bindle gets back. Okay, son. Carry on, Albert Perkins, and make the foes of England sorry that you were ever born. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just fine, thank you, Mr. Duffy, and I won't take a bit of your time. I, uh, uh, pardon me. Yes, sir. Yes? Oh, it's for you. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Johnny. That's fine. Get them started. I'll let you know before they finish loading. We were bombed out. No office. Sail again. Yeah, sail our mouth full, but there's a bit of a silver lining of that. Yesterday we had an office with no lease wire. Today we got a lease wire with no office. Lease wire? Do you mean to tell me Mr. Tyson? Signed, sealed. Uh, pardon me. Yes, sir. Yes, it's for you. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Why, that's fine, Mr. Stuyvesant, and paid for. Yeah? Thank you very much. I'll see you later. <laughs> Miss Duffield, this lease wires cost us a lot of money. We're going to save 40 minutes on any big stuff that breaks, and I've got a hunch it's cracked already. Now, I can save another 20 minutes if you decide to sub censor direct to our office. You said just now you didn't have an office. Oh, that's a mere detail. Now, before you say no, Mr. Duffield... Uh, but look here, Mr. Thank Mr. you, thank you very oh, much. Now, there's one other little thing. All our teletype machines have been wrecked, and I've got to dig one up somewhere. Well, now, I... Uh... Now, all the loose teletype machines in the city are right here in this office, and I know you can spare one. I think that... Thank you, thank you very uh, much. You've saved my life. Uh, Good day to you, sir. Well... Mr. Duffield, it's stupid of me not to remember, but that machine isn't worth a thing to me without a teletype operator. Now, you've got a girl in this office by the name of Carson. There's one thing I like about you, Mr. Mitchell. You never ask for anything. I could save another ten minutes if I had Carson. You can have Miss Carson. Thank you very much. Tell her to report to what's left of my office. Good day, sir. <laughs> yes? No, I'm sorry, he's just left. Yes, sir. All right, Jeff. 
Let's go. Come on, boys. Help Jeff up here, will you? Why, hello, Red. Round two. Why, hello. What do you mean by following me around? Me? You making a habit of going around picking up men after air raids? Oh, just a minute. I'm looking for a Mr. Mitchell of the Consolidated Press. Well, you can call me Miss. Are you him? That's ungrammatical, but true. How's it going, Johnny? Got everything but Stuyvesant's office. Oh, leave that. We've got to have some room for the men. All right, boys, come on, everybody. Let's go. All aboard. Let's go. Wait, wait a minute. No I... time to talk now. Come on, let's go. The Red were in Rowway's center in the orchestra. Win, lose, or draw, you'll have something to tell your grandchildren. I'm sorry, sir, but Mr. Mitchell said... I don't care what he But said. I thought, Mr. Hall... He's not paid, I think. Press call Duffield. Johnny, what? Uh, hello, Mitchell talking. How are you, Mr. Duffield? I just fine, thanks. I'm moving into our new office right this minute. Yeah, now on our address is the wine cell of the Regency Hotel. Yes, sir, Miss Carson's right here waiting for the teletype. What about the sub sensor, Mr. Duffield? That's fine, thanks a lot. Uh, oh, hello, Mr. Hans. Hi. Just the man I want to see. Mr. Mitchell, I demand an explanation. Excuse me, just a minute. Johnny. Mitch. What about the telegraph people? Did you mention Duffield's name? I did. The installation squad's on the way down. Fine, fine. Mr. Hobbs, can I get a hold of a blueprint to subseller right away? I gotta find a way to punch in our lines. Punch in your lines? Yes. What's the meaning of this? Well, owing to circumstances beyond our control, we've been forced to look out, look out. We've been forced to move our headquarters into the wine cellar for a while. You can't barge in here like this. Mr. Hobbs, you'll thank me for thank it. Thank you. Mr. Hobbs. Come here, just a minute. You. Mr. Hobbs. This is strictly off the record. I got it right from the top. The air raid protection's taken over underground every hotel in London for emergency public air raid shelters. You didn't know that, did you? No, the I... ARP would have commandeered your wine cellar before morning if we hadn't moved in. You would have had to take care of scores of people. Not only that, but feed them. But Besides, think of the break it is for the Regency House to have the CP headquarters right here in this hotel. Just think of that. 1,000 newspapers, 90 million readers. Why, that's worth a million pounds sterling in publicity alone. Can you deny that? No, I can't. When an organization that. like the CP selects your wine cellar for its headquarters, do you know what that shows? It shows you have a safe hotel. Why, the whole world would know that you have the only steel constructed hotel in the city of London. Man, can't you see that? Yes, I can. Why, I Mr. Hobbs, I am pained and surprised. The only reason I picked this hotel is because I live here. I got half a mind to make a deal with the Savoy or Dorchester or any other hotel. Red, get me the Savoy. Red, cancel that call. Cancel the call. Oh, believe me, Mr. Mitchell, when I was suddenly informed that you were moving in here, I had no idea, not an inkling, of what the situation was. Mr. Mitchell, this is the best protected wine cellar in London. And, of course, if our waiters won't interfere with you, you know, coming in... Oh, no, out. we'll get around that, all right. Mr. Mitchell. Yeah? We're from the Ministry of Information with the teleton. Well, put it right in there, boys. Mr. Hart, some of us are going to have to sleep here, so we're going to need about a dozen cots. Got to have some drop lights and a few more phones. Oh, Mr. Mitchell. That's me. We're from the telegraph company. Just the man I want to see. Come on in here. This is Mr. Hart. Got a set of blueprints upstairs to show you exactly what the conduits are and the other information you want to be glad to give to you. Yes, sir. Get it done as quick as you can, boys. Thanks, Mr. Hart. See you later. Johnny, Johnny! Tell him, Mitch. Johnny, got to have a special telephone connected up to the roof of the old building so we can keep in touch with those uh, pigeons hmm? straight away. Johnny, get this teletype machine working the very first thing, will you? Right, Daisy, get Collins and over and tell him where we are. Yes, sir. How's about something to eat, Red? Fine, where? Never mind about that. Fish tie, will you? Well, Jeff, how are we doing? We seem to be getting in deeper, sir. Jeff, no puns. All right. All right, sir. <laughs> go, Red, let's go. Oh, say, Johnny, I forgot to tell Hobbs. Gotta have some food for the boys down here, will you? Get a lot of hot coffee, too. I got a hunch it's gonna be a big night. Yes, sir. Yank? Yeah? If I had a hat, I'd take it off to you. You would? Red? Yes? You grow on me. I do? Mm -hmm. Come on, this way. Where are we going? To my rooms. Well, what are you... Oh. Oh! No etching. No etching. It's 
filthy, but it's home. <laughs> Are we having dinner up here? No, no, we're going to eat downstairs. Oh, I've nothing to wear. Oh, just leave that to me. Uh, any special kind of an outfit you like? A cream one. It's a good idea. About uh, size 12, huh? Right. Now, I think the first order of the day would be a slight rent. Good. Ladies first, first door to your left, right in there. Yeah. Don't forget to wash behind the ears. I'll be back before the dry. You've changed, Red. Where have you? For a busy man, you get around quite a lot, don't you? Oh, no, you got me all wrong, Red. I'm strictly a one-woman man. One at a time, you mean? Mm -mm. One and only. Trouble is finding her. Naturally, you gotta shop around to get the right article. On approval? Yeah, sort of. You know, Red, you look awful nice. Thank you. The more I see you, the better I like you. Uh, should we have dinner here, upstairs, do you think? No, we'll have dinner here, downstairs, I think. Mm. I think so. Wrong number. The name? Bloomin' Blitzkrieg. Realize it's our 24th anniversary? 24? Sure. Just 24 hours ago, we met. <laughs> In the dark, I couldn't see what you looked like, so I had to use my imagination. When I saw you, you looked just exactly as I had imagined. Did I really? Mm hmm. Even some turned up nose. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Who's what? That woman over there hiding behind her head. You know her? 
Mm. Looks like somebody on a slab. Mm-hmm. Well, why does she keep staring at me in that peculiar way? Uh, you're wearing her dress. Morning, Albert. How are you? Very well, sir. Another day, another raid, huh? Yes, sir. Everything under control? Seems to be, sir. Oh, that's fine. I wish those pigeons would hurry up and get here, Mr. Mitchell. Oh, now, don't get impatient, son. Noah had to wait a long time for his pigeon, but it finally came. I'll be here waiting for mine, sir. Yeah, the boy. I'll call you later. Morning, Jeff. Morning, sir. Did you have her? Don't mind if I do, sir. All right. How'd you sleep last night? Not very well. Too room and quiet down here, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jeff. Thank you, sir. You bet. Say, Jeff, I've always wanted to ask you, what'd you get that VC for? Oh, in the last war, sir, the... Cherry's had a strategic hill on the western front. Only about the size of a temple, sir. Oh. But we wanted it. I was with the machine gun detachment, sir. I happened to get there first. When the others came along, a landmine went off. I was the only survivor. All I lost was my eyes, sir. Hmm. Oh, I suppose the Cherry's had that hill back again. Hmm? Yes, but... The they aren't going to keep it, sir. Round three, Red. Did I snore? Just a little. Nothing worth mentioning. Got a cigarette? Sure. You haven't been to bed, have you? Yeah, there a few hours ago. Couldn't sleep very well. Too much coffee, I guess. Had the craziest dream. Did you dream someone scooped you on a story? Yeah, never dreamed about business. I dreamed about you and your husband. My husband? Yeah, the one you told me about in the tube. And your four children. Uh, I only made it up so you'd let me sleep. Oh, yeah, I know that, but I dreamed about it just the same. And what was the dream like? Well, I dreamed you were gone. There was nobody here to work the teletype, so I went all over London looking for you. The streets were blacked out, and I couldn't see anything, so I made a tour of all the air raid shelters, and finally I found you in one of them. And your husband, and your four children. For me, I sent one to America, don't you remember? Oh, no, yeah, Bino was there, too. That's funny. Well, there was something funnier still. Your husband. What was funny about my husband? Well, he was me. What happened? I woke up. Oh. What do you suppose that means? Bomb. Well, it must have some significance. What sort of children did I have? Oh, swell. They all look like you. Except the albino. He looked like me. <laughs> Completely balmy. Oh, look that up in Freud. See what it means. <laughs> what time is it? Time to go to work. Daisy, come on, I'm on Adam, let's go. Come on, boys. Come on, fellas, fellas, come on, up on Adam, let's go. 
go. Come on. Come on. Got to get things rolling here. Are you Mr. Mitchell? Yeah. Well, I'm the confounded censor. I'm awfully glad to meet you and awfully glad you're here. My name's Channing, Captain Lionel Channing. This is your desk right here, Captain. Did you bring your stamp with you? I did. There's the ink pad, the paste, the blue pencil, and the scissors. Uh, get us that story on top. That's one goes out first. Get set, Brent. We're going to work now. Secretly leaving Bertus Guard. I didn't get it from the Ministry of Information. What are you killing that for? Censored. Why? Because it's military information I couldn't possibly allow you to release. But if I know it, certainly the British intelligence knows it. Very likely. But then why can't I send it? Perhaps, Mr. Mitchell, the British intelligence doesn't want the German intelligence to know that the British intelligence knows. I'm not saying so. This war isn't being fought for the particular benefit of the consolidated press. Well, if this keeps up, I'll find a way to be my own censor. I have to slip the mug of Mickey. What's a Mickey? It's a pen with brass knuckles. Hobbs, what is this? Mr. Mitchell, it's just as you told me yesterday. The government's taken over all the available shelters in the emergency. This is the only place I can put these people up in. Okay, put them up, the more the merrier. Taking quite a shellacking out there, huh? Worse yet, sir. Yeah. Albert, any pigeons yet? No, sir. Oh, all pigeons and everything else is weighing out at Shrekel. The little ball. Oh, Mrs. Jordies have just come over. And they're headed your way. Yes? This is one thing you can't blue pencil. This is official. Seven, New York, Red. All set. Take this. Van Dyke, New York. For second time in 24 hours, CP officer struck by bomb. Fortunately, second bomb which crashed through ceiling of CP office, Regency wine cellar was dud. No casualties. CP office still in business. More later. Oh, Mr. Mitchell. Yeah. The demolition squad is on its way here to remove the bomb. That's fine. Yes, but I have bad news for you. What's that? Well, you see, there's no way we can brace that ceiling before tomorrow. So I'm ordering everybody out of this cellar. Just a minute. Come here, Hans. I am disappointed in you, Hans. In me, sir? Yes. You've let me down. And I never expected that of you. But I don't understand, Mr. Mitchell. This is no time to say a thing can't be done. This is a time in the history of England when no one can shirk a duty or avoid a responsibility. Well, I realize that, sir, but you're asking the impossible. All right, now look here, Hobbs, and listen to me. I just sent out a story giving this hotel the greatest break in its life. I mentioned the Regency three times. But if you keep on talking like that, I can kill that story just as quick as I sent it and tell 90 million people what a flimsy matchbox this hotel is. But what can I do, Mr. Mitchell? Get that ceiling brace before the demolition squad gets here. Well, I'll, I'll do the best I can, sir. And hop to it. Telephone, Mr. Mitchell. Take it here on Channing's desk. Yeah. Are you by any chance acquainted with the Channings of Cheltenham? My uncle. Yeah, go on. Well, I believe I met your uncle once at the Eton and Harrow match. You don't tell me. No, it was at Wimbledon, I think, last season. Or was it? <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, who, who owns this? That's all I wanted to know. Well, Captain, would it interest you to know there's not one English plane in the sky over London? Really? You know that just as well as I do. The Jerrys have had the skies themselves all morning. Where's the RAF? Have they been blasted out of the skies? That's a question for the Air Ministry to answer, if they care to answer. What's going on? You think you can stop the Jerrys with anti-aircraft alone? That doesn't add up. Mr. Mitchell, you happen to have a ringside seat. But civilians aren't expected to criticize military operations. I'm not a civilian, I'm a reporter, and I'm not criticizing, I'm just reading the handwriting on the wall. What are you driving at? Invasion, that's what I'm driving at, and that's what the Germans are driving at. You're entitled to your opinion. That's not an opinion, that's a fact. You know it, and I know it, and 90 million readers are gonna know it, and they're gonna wonder what's happened to the RAF, and I'm the guy that's gonna tell them. I'm afraid I can't allow you to question any decision I make. Unless my stamp is on a dispatch, it doesn't go through. Well, then how in the name of common sense do you expect Yes. Captain. I'm sorry. I guess this war is getting the best of me. Oh, that's quite all right. I'm going up to have a bite of lunch. Will you join me? No, thanks. Got to keep my eye on things. Stay with it, Jeff. Stay with it. Is this the one? Right. Thanks, Red. Thanks. German planes over St. Pancras and Maryland. Mr. Mitchell, could you spare a minute? Is it important, Jeff? Squadrons over Knightsbridge, Kensington, Chelsea. Uh, folks, I've uh, got some good news for you. Uh, 
As you know, this place isn't very safe here, and the manager, Mr. Hobbs, just phoned me and said he's got a place for you in the basement. Oh, 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 yeah. What's that not safe? What about us? What do we do? Uh, Daisy, come here, will you? Can I come to the jail? How do we get to the annex? I'll have somebody take you right up there, sir. Uh, Daisy, I want you to take these people up to Mr. Hobbs. He'll tell you what to do with them. Now, look here, Mitchell. What about us? All right, folks, let's step along now. You're going to be very comfortable over there in the annex basement. It's the best shelter in town, so move right along, will you? Well, that's it. Move along, Mitchell. Mitchell, what does Hobbs have to say? I'm, I insist upon knowing. Johnny, Johnny Dunn, I've got a crew come down here to move our stuff, and I want you to go to the annex and figure out a layout. But Mitchell, I'll be along. Mitchell, for heaven's sake, Chief. Uh, uh, do you know George Bernard Shaw? Well, of course, intimately. Well, Hobbs tells me he's upstairs right this minute having lunch. He is? Yeah, why don't you go up there and get a quote from him? Well, what shall I ask him? Well, uh, uh, ask him what he thinks of the war. That's excellent. I'll do that. That's excellent. Fine, excellent. Fine. Uh, Fred, I want you to take Jeff and go to the annex basement with the others. There's no basement in the annex. Well, there isn't. You know it as well as I do. Well, Hobbs told me You're that... You're a liar. The... Sending all those people out there, women and children, when you know there's no place for them to go, why did you do it? Well, if you must know, it's because they were in the way. Of all the rotten, contemptible things I've ever seen. You know, this isn't a nursing home, it's a newspaper office. I can't have this place cluttered up with all those people. What about Johnny Dunn and Stuyvesant and the telephone operator? What about me? Did we clutter up the place too? Yes. I don't need you anymore. You didn't get any phone call from Hobbs. You got a news flash of some sort, and you know Channing isn't around here to stop you from sending it. But I'm here. You're getting out. Please, Red, listen to me. Believe me, Red, I got those people out of here for their own good. And you got to get out of here too quick. I'll go if you'll go. I can't. Don't ask me any questions, Red. Just trust me and believe me. If you think I'm going to leave you here alone with this teletype... Telephone's out, Yank. Telegraph's out, too, huh? Thanks. Round four, Red. Nothing to worry about, really. I'll dig us out, all right. If only had some way of getting in touch with them. What for? They know we're trapped. Yes, but they don't know. They don't know what? Hallelujah! Boy, I know one thing. We got a way to reach those people upstairs. Red, this is one for the books. Imagine communicating 3,000 miles across the ocean, 3,000 miles back to get word to somebody not 50 yards away. Come on, let's go, Red. Hit it. Uh, Van Dyke, New York. Your correspondent and teletype operator, Captain Wine Cellar, with door jammed by cave in. Phone's dead. Telegraph's dead. Bomb we thought dead, very much alive. Uh, telephone management reaches the hotel, evacuate everybody, and get rescue squad working to dig us out. Come on, shut up, Red. We still got a chance. Sometimes the delayed action of those things takes hours. Those people you put out, why didn't you tell them it was a time bomb? 
and have the ARP rope off the whole building and put me out of business? Out of business anyway. No phones, no telegraph. You can't get any more news. I don't need any more. There's no kidding. We're a couple of dead geese and so is everybody else in the hotel. Unless we're out of here before time bomb explodes. Please, please, please. Telephone transatlantic to hotel management. Have rescue squad dig us out pronto. Every minute counts. Meantime, get set for invasion story coming. Uh... You can't send any news on this machine without Captain Channing. Captain Channing isn't here and he can't get here. That isn't my fault. I've got an exclusive direct from Calais by Pigeon via Albert. You can't use it. Listen, Red. In all my years as a copy boy, I run across my share of stories, but this is the greatest story I've ever had. You're not going to send it. To wait a lifetime for a story like this, Red. You don't know what I've got. Hitler is in Calais right now. He might be in London tonight. I've got an exclusive on that story. I've got a teletype machine to send it with and no sensor to stop me. It's your duty to communicate your information to the War Office first. Don't you suppose they know Hitler's in Calais if I know it? Of course they know it, but you heard what Captain Channing said. The British intelligence doesn't want the Germans to know that the British War Office knows it. Well, that's their lookout. Look, Yank, if you were the British censor, would you let that story go out? I'm not the British censor. I'm a newspaper man working for the Consolidated Press. If you send out that story, you'll be giving information to the enemy. I'll be giving information to 90 million readers of a thousand newspapers, and the only thing that's going to stop me from sending that story is that time bomb. Now, are you going to take it, or do I send it myself? Let it go, Red. Uh, lead, all night lead. Exclusive on invasion of England. Your correspondent able to rip... Veil of secrecy from sudden departure yesterday of Adolf Hitler from Berndtschgarten. Today, German Führer stand... Take it, Red, take it. Today, the German Führer stands in Calais. Hitler in personal command of mechanized troops gathered for assault on England. Hitler arrived French port in armored train, gift Mussolini. Train gun both ends with roofs of sleeping cars bearing International Red Cross insignia instead of swastika. Hitler presence Calais proves operations no small time test of British defense system, but enemy attack leveled at British Isles in all out invasion. for that chair. I said get off of that chair.
it. Nobody's gonna stop me. I ought to break your neck trying to smash that tire tire. You can't do it. Let go! as quick as you can and get off the roof and into the nearest shelter. Can you hear me? See Blackwood Barges. What? I, I can't hear you, Albert. See Blackwood Barges. Amphibious tanks. Sea sled. Artificial forest. I think it's Mr. Sir. The fire bomb's just landed on the roof. I'll be right back. Yank, please don't. You coward! They'll arrest you if you send that story. They'll put you in prison. That's right. Send your scoop. It's a great story. You've got to be first with it, no matter what it costs. First with exclusive. Be sure and sign your name to it. So everyone will know who said it. Maybe you'll get a bonus for it. German Luftwaffe today scored a tremendous victory in the skies over London. Single-handed, one of the Nazi squadrons mowed down an Englishman named Albert Perkins, aged 12. Albert Perkins, a volunteer, stuck to his post through the greatest bombardment in history. He will not be mentioned in orders. He will not get a citation or a Victoria Cross. But when they find his body and bury it in the ground of England, 
the soil over his grave will be free soil. Use a drink. Okay. I'll buy. in here. 